Hi everyone, November 10. It is 11.59 p.m. on the East Coast, which means it is 9 o'clock on the West Coast. I want to read Barbara Wilson's comment. In the last month or so, here in Oregon, I have received disaster preparedness notifications, and yes, quite unusual. One was a local Lane County invite for a safety and disaster preparedness meeting presented by the police and fire chiefs and the electric and water commissioner. I also received from a subscriber in Oregon that email. I think I posted a video on it. I'm not sure. Another was an email from the Oregon State Legislature stating that November, December might warrant the citizens' attention to preparedness. Included a list of what to do, have in advance, and she um, gave us a snippet of the email stating, we should all be reminded of Ted Koppel's best-selling book, Lights Out, as he described how a cyber attack or other similar event could easily cut power for weeks, if not months, to large parts of America. Such an outage could be caused by a cyber attack, simple computer failure, sabotage, environmental or other terrorism, foreign attack, or the Cascadia event. Has anyone else been getting notifications like this? So, we have been talking about an EMP attack since I've been on YouTube, which has been now close to seven years. It is written about, videos are uh, many people posting videos on a possible EMP, mainstream media reporting on the possibility of an EMP attack and how we are not prepared for it. So what is it about so many that have to write about John X Army as opposed to the information that I presented in the video, the last video that I posted. I don't get it, but wow, man, so many people are stuck on personality. Um, and I said in that video, don't leave these comments because it's not about John X Army. And then you have people writing, He's a fear monger. So am I, apparently. I've gotten comments like that. Uh, it's... Look. If it happens, it happens. The only reason why I posted it was because everybody needs to be prepared for anything we are seeing fires in California raging out of control, taking out thousands upon thousands of homes. 250,000 have been evacuated. 150 plus homes gone in the Ventura County fires. And it, the number of those that are destroyed in the Butte County fires is, no, this is the Woolsey fire, uh, Butte, the campfire in Butte County. This is an update at today, 7 p.m., so 10 o'clock. It was updated about two hours ago. And... The number of single residences destroyed, 6,453 in 24 hours. What we are seeing is 
and escalation, acceleration of these agendas, taking out large chunks of homes, people. Understand evil is capable of doing anything. So, um, stop with, you know, shooting the messenger and get with the message. So, I want you to listen to uh, some of what these women are saying. And this is, I believe, the Woolsey fire. Because we probably have to deliver the news to them. Let me get the volume up, sorry. Um, here. They were able to get out safely. Wait, they got, their got out safely. Everybody. Did yes. they get the things that were important to them? Yes, as far as I know. Yes, yes, yes. We have been prepared for about a day and a half. I got a call from a friend of mine who's a Ventura County firefighter, and he told me when it started in Bell Canyon. Yeah. So we've been ready. I was a Wow, so a firefighter calls that woman to tell her to prepare for a fire. And this Woolsey fire, didn't that just start yesterday? Or am I um, getting my days mixed up? But that's what I remember. So the firefighter was warning, I guess, his friends that this fire was coming. Up here just an hour ago, and See? this was fine. No, right, right. Tell my mom that it was fine. There was nothing burning. There was a fire. Beautiful up blue there. skies. Exactly. There was nothing. We drove your yes. entire neighborhood just to check Us and make too. sure you guys were Us okay. Us too. And we've never been through this. Not in 20 years. It's the wind. I the wind. It's the wind. It's the wind. Let me ask you guys in California. Now, I lived in California uh, for about a year and a half. That was uh, 1977, beginning in 1977. I remember the Santa Ana winds, but I don't remember anyone ever putting together critical fire weather conditions with Santa Ana winds. Is that, has that always been the case with your Santa Ana winds? That they create critical fire weather conditions? The reason I'm asking this is I thought it was interesting that Wikipedia uh, associates Santa Ana winds with fires. Just asking. I don't know. Um, it's the winds. Forest fires generally are in forests. How many forest fires have come into densely populated areas in California? Based on the comments that I received asking that question in another video. Uh, you guys who live there were saying, no, what you are seeing is unprecedented. The taking out of thousands of homes. Not, not with just one fire event, but now the recent years it seems as if this is happening with greater <clears throat> frequency. Oh, those frequencies that can cause wind. Um, I do also want to point out, I went to Ventu Sky. Now, it is 12.09 a.m. on the East Coast, so it's 9.09 .09 in Los Angeles County. These are the winds. Three, seven, ten, nine, two, one, three, two, four, five. All over California. You have some higher winds the border of Mexico. Twelve miles per hour. 
up north you have almost no winds going on. 7, 10, 4, 1, 3, 8, 7. So, it's now 9 p.m. and your incident report for the Woolsey fire states that you're going to be getting more winds the Woolsey fire but also uh, firefighters battling Woolsey fire bracing for a return of gusty Santa Ana winds so you don't have the winds now are these winds are they winds that one can predict at like a certain time? Officials are investigating what caused the fire, but we do know that electric company PG&E experienced a problem with an electrical transmission line near the site of the fire minutes before it broke out. Okay. So, I apologize if that was a little bit loud. PG&E is standing up now, ready to stand accountable for this fire. Please understand this. PG&E does not care. They can, they can come out and say, oh, well, wiring we had an electrical problem and it started this fire because they don't want anybody to look beyond this fire PG and E that's the reason why PG and E is taking responsibility and PG and E is owned by Rothschild so the head of PG&E got the notice, you take responsibility, or put it out that it could have been your fault. They don't care, because this is what happens, and I've posted videos on this. PG&E was fined a huge amount for the Thomas fire, I believe, one of the fires last year, PG&E, so the state legislatures, they fined PG&E. Where does PG&E pay their fine to your state government? This, you know, and your state government is filled with corrupt officials. This is a game they play. What then happened next? Your state legislators decided that you would pay the fine by increasing your taxes. It's a win-win for PG&E and your government. Who gets shafted? Ordinary Californians. Um, this is an aerial, aerial footage, Thousand Oaks, California. So we get to see the same old, same old. Nice clean grass, clean pools, trees, foliage on the trees, the house, gone, decimated. But those high, high winds, and you don't even see any any debris on the streets, 
in the driveway, in the pool, clean drives, really? And considering how high these winds, you would think that the some of the foliage would have blown off the trees and into the driveway and the streets. But how? Oh, right, those embers, those embers coming from the forest landed on just that house. Oh, and that house. This is what people are believing. It's frightening. It's frightening when you realize how people are not using their brains. So uh, mental boost. You might want to check out Mental Boost's channel. Malibu Blue Flames, weirdest anomaly in California. Unknown physics. Mental Boost has been posting for a very long time on these fires. Interesting, isn't it? Well, this is what the reporter says about it. A lot, a lot of flames still going, going and some blue flames, flames that you see there, meaning that the gas is still on. on. I'm going to ask my photographer, Joe Ruiz, Ruiz to come, come with me down the the gas is still on. That's why you've got those blue flames. The gas is still on. And this reporter is outside this home with the gas still on, flames all around it. And she's not worried. It's going to like blow up, do something, like explode. Or, oh, right. We've been hearing an awful lot about those propane tanks exploding. And the gas was still on in this home. You would have thought that the gas company would have, oh, what is it, PG, Pacific Gas and Electric, that Pacific Gas and Electric, they would have been on it immediately to turn off the electricity and gas going into these homes but I guess not. We're in trouble. Well, Scott McLean is from the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. He joins us via Skype from Sacramento, California. Uh, Scott, just bring us up to date then with what's being called the Woolsey Fire. We understand it spread rapidly overnight and is now threatening Malibu. Right, I believe Malibu has been evacuated as we speak right now, and that fire actually grew to 14,000 acres as of a couple hours ago, and 0% containment. 0% containment, and it grew so rapidly. All the fires, the Hill Fire, the Wolsey Fire, the Camp Fire, all of them grew with such speed such rapidity, all of them. How did that happen? Oh, those Santa Ana winds. 24 hours. In 24 hours, all of this, all of this happening and people aren't asking questions. We're hearing that nearly 150,000 people uh, have been evacuated uh, across the area. What's happening to them and where are they all going? They're either going to their friends, their relatives, motels, camping, whatever they can do. Those with RVs we find will uh, take their RVs and go camp out in various parking lots out of harm's way. And uh, it's not just Southern California that's been affected. I mean, fires are also raging in the north of the state as well. Tell us what's happening there. Uh, now we're going to talk about my hometown, my home area. The um, <clears throat> campfire took off yesterday morning about 6.30 and exponentially grew to thousands, tens of thousands of acres. Right now we're looking at 70,000. Exponentially grew to 90,000 in 24 hours. Now it is at 105,000.
acres. And did I tell you the containment? 20% contained. Well, uh, you Californians, you know, that <laughs> I don't know how you are dealing with those that you are surrounded by because my asking the question, it's unprecedented to me, but I lived on the East Coast, so I asked if it was unprecedented to you, and you have been telling me yes. So how, how do you cope with so many people who are not getting that something is very, very wrong here? So we have 110 people missing in Northern California. I find that number to be very low very low considering that so many had to evacuate immediately immediately they had what an hour to get out of there so we have now 25 people dead mainstream media they are reporting that people couldn't escape and only 110 missing. The evacuation centers don't hold that many people. I think it's about 1,500. Where are the people going? Death toll, 25. You know, Trump's fire tweet infuriates California celebrities. Hollywood strikes back. I have thought for a while this whole new divide and conquer, you know, the, the left right, the blue red, the calling Trump a Nazi and uh, who? Who could they put in the White House that could withstand so much derision and being degraded on a daily basis by millions of people but Trump? As a New Yorker, Trump, well, we didn't have Twitter then, but the, the public fighting, like with Rosie O'Donnell, as an example. He's shooting off his mouth, calling her fat and all this. She going back. There, it was, well, what it may have been was just a stunt for publicity. But now we have all of Hollywood. Now, Trump is a, you know, a TV star, Mr. Re Reality King. But we have all Trump. How could he have the, the tweet? The first thing we hear from Trump on these fires, when it is known that paradise is gone, the town is gone. He must have known that ordinary Americans were really suffering and the one thing that he tweets is uh, we may withhold aid because of your poor forest management. That's it. Cold heartless and inflammatory. Don't you think there are people around Trump who say, oh, I wouldn't tweet that. That is going to cause an awful lot of animosity. But then he goes ahead and tweets it. Or does he not have any political handlers? Maybe not. Trump is 
incredibly immature, heartless, cold. But now we have all of Hollywood all upset. We've got Sarah Silverman and Don Cheadle and Katy Perry, Kathy Griffin, Miss I'll Hold a Bloody Trump Head, dismembered in my hand. Oh, it's just a joke. Uh, Bette Midler, we've got Maria Shriver castigating the U.S. president for his tweets. I, I have to say, I think all of this is staged and Trump is part of it. Perry, this is an absolutely heartless response. Of course, the California professional firefighter, the president, gets involved. Wildfires are sparked and spread not only in forested areas, but in populated areas. Well, those populated areas... Mm, not so much. But open fields fueled by parched vegetation, high winds, low humidity, and geography, and guess what? No one knows about the geoengineering that is taking place. Or how about all of the, the microwave radiation coming from cell towers and cell phones and Wi-Fi and smart meters drying out the vegetation. They did. Are people morons today? Uh, yeah, they are. They just are. So we've got Midler, Bette Midler. If only we had a leader capable of grasping what the events in California mean and guiding us to solve them. Well, Bette, I guess you too don't know how to use your brain. Have you not noticed the skies? Have you not looked into the dangers of the microwave radiation? Have you not grasp, grasped the events that are taking place in California, like your state government turning California into a communist state? No, you're not going to grasp that. So by late afternoon, Trump had reversed course, tweeting out that our hearts are with those fighting the fires, the 52,000 who have been evacuated, and the families of the 11 who have died. God bless them all. Fabulous. This is now the President of the United States. This is how he responds to... Well, if it's 6,453 homes, then the 260 businesses. How many people have lost their home? Far more than 6,453. Let's, on average, three people per home. And that's the best that this president can do. Wow, something is so wrong with this country now. Um, but interesting. You've got this fire going. You have people dying in their cars. And they have everything removed their skeleton f frame, so many animals dying, so many people suffering right now. But what we have is a big fight. Everything is a friggin' fight in our country. Everything. We can't band together. For anything. Everything is a fight. Everybody says don't play the blame game as they're blaming people. You know, it's it's sickening 
what this country has become. Anyway, that's my update. Tell me about those wins, guys. Is Vent to Sky correct? Pay attention to the wins tonight. Because if these fires uh, change direction because of heavy uh, or high winds, or they start spreading out and more people lo lose their homes, I want to know if you guys are experiencing these kinds of winds. And do Santa Ana winds come abruptly? Like so abruptly, having heard from many of you who live in California, during these fires, not just these current fires, but even last year, many people were saying the winds came out of nowhere so strong that they literally almost knocked you over. That um, speaks of winds created by frequencies. I'm so sorry that you have to deal with this. I am so sorry that, you know, you get emails from your state legislature telling you to prepare. It's so sad what has happened to this country and the people in it. But to every one of you experiencing all of this, I am I just hope that nothing happens and that you remain safe. Oh, and I did hear, not from Jane Tandy, but people have been leaving comments saying Jane is back in her home, but doesn't have internet. I guess she doesn't have electricity. I guess PG&E, or uh, what is it, not in... That's Northern. SoCal Edison? I don't know what the company name is. I guess they were on it and turned off the electricity. But PG&E, I guess, kept the electricity on for, you know, homes that have that blue flame. Where is that blue flame? right here. All links are below.